Hey, what's up survivors, and welcome back to Sorry No Longer, and this is the post-mortem analysis of the map. Um, so yeah, I completed the Victory Monument, yay me, um, and I'm moving on now, but before we do so, I just want to uh, do a bit of a post-mortem analysis about the map, and I also want to detonate this TNT. I knew it was primed, but I just wanted to blow it up in the post-mortem first. Creeper down there. There's the stick. <laughs> um, okay, so that actually works by the way I tested that. And let's let L out at the same time. So yeah, I completed all the dungeons, got all the wool. There's even some iron behind Al as well. So if you watch Paul's series, you know that he calls all the villagers Al or Scott or something along those lines. <laughs> so I completed the Saws Monument and yeah, the all five walls I got. So this area um, was the Victory Monument. We're kind of done here. It was kind of nice and neatly tucked away. I did fix this off camera. Apparently, there wasn't actually that much wrong with it. I just had a few blocks to add. I could have fixed that in the game and made my life a lot easier, but... You know, I didn't. <laughs> so, if I just uh, head over here to where we started, this is where we started in Paul's very first hidey hole of the Survive and Thrive 2 world. And essentially, this area was, it was tough, it was very, very hard. Um, there was the door here, um, but that got kicked in straight away as I was reading these at the start of the map um, by zombies. And two, two zombies came in, followed by a skeleton and I got shot by the skeleton so I was already weakened before I'd even started the map and what we first had to do was we, we first had to go down here there's a trap here, I, I saw that, there's some redstone um, and down here there's more coal there I could have even mined that out as well but yeah we had to mine coal out, some coal here um, and I remember this area being very very hard because there was a creeper spawner down here somewhere I forget where but there's even some lava there as well, wherever that came from. But I remember this area being tough. It, it was very, very hard here. Um, the coal was there. I remember a creeper blowing up. I think there was a zombie there as well. A couple of creepers blew up. And I had to get a wooden block. And I ended up pulling out that wooden block there. And from there, obviously, we went over to Cozy Cottage um, and set up base for the map there. I remember here there was some enchanted tools and a stick um, but uh, that they really did serve me well the uh, enchanted tools. There was good use of the enchantment system in the map I must say. Um, so yeah we finished up here I remember this and uh, flew over to Cozy Cottage. I never did read all the signs. I mean there's a couple of spawners and TNT and stuff here and that was not primed. Um, what's this villager got to say? I never did check his out the village was blown to pieces by the creepers. We came to help you fight back. Some tunnels are blocked by wooden planks. This means that there are nothing uh, of interest down the blocked tunnel. I hope this helps. Alright, well, I guess that answers that, but I kind of did work that one out. Come on out, Al, the second. A torch behind Al as well. Well, never mind, I guess. What were you offering to trade? 20 wool for an emerald. Alright. Chain chest plate in there. There's coal here that I checked out. Wasn't a whole lot of stuff. Oh no, you don't. You're not hurting my Al. Do you understand? Run, Al. You'll be safe here. I'll, I'll, I'll protect you, Al. Don't worry. There you go. You're all safe there now. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, from there, we obviously went over to Cozy Cottage. And we did up there, but we've already been there. I next went up to the Tower of Power. Um, and this was the Tower of Sour, <laughs> which was a very good name, um, and I remember this area being very, very, very hard. Um, it was Dungeon 3. Um, you know what, I'm going to take that gas spawner out on the roof so that it doesn't spawn anymore while I'm trying to talk to you. But I remember here being very, very hard. There's a couple of bits in here, and I went to the Nether first. Now I'm not going to go to the Nether, because there wasn't a whole lot there, but... Just let you out, Al the Fourth. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot there. Um, there was a couple of blaze spawners, so it wasn't too bad. It was moderately easy. I wouldn't say it was too difficult. Um, what was Al doing? 
<laughs> um, but yeah, there was a couple of blaze spawners. I don't even think I took them all out, to be honest. And I got the brown wool out of there. I went back there to do some brewing very briefly, but other than that, it was not too bad. That area was moderately easy, and that was where the brown wool was. Because there wasn't a lot there, I can't really comment a lot about it, but yeah, a couple of spawners there, and that, that was about it. Um, I remember the first floor, this one, having blaze spawners on it, and that was not too bad. I think there was one or two blaze, and I took them out fairly easily. It was on this floor that it got hard, because there were a bunch of creeper spawners here, I remember that very well. Uh, the damage is here for all to see, there is holes sort of everywhere. And then we had to go up onto the roof deck. And there was a sort of fishing rod and some diamonds, I think, in there. And here was protected by a gas spawner. I didn't bother taking it out because of the fact that there was a there was a lot of gas up here at the time. There was um, sort of four or five gas all in the air. So I thought, well, rather than trying to run around collecting everything and messing around trying to break spawners open, just grab the wool, which was magenta at the time, and I ran back to Cozy Cottage. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of that. Um, what I liked about this area was the fact that utilising blazers and gas in a building that was from the nether fortress, because we had nether rack and this nether brick. And I like the idea of how Cold Fusion kind of used the nether enemies in another place and turned an area which is not designed to be a dungeon into one. And there was clever use of the nether as well. So, yeah, all good over there. Um, is, is, I hear a zombie down here. I don't want to let Al out while there's a zombie around because I want him hurt. Uh, yeah, if you watch Paul's videos, then I'm sure you will have uh, seen his Sorry No Longer Let's Play. And essentially, um, the Al name comes from Call Me Al, which is a song by Paul Simon. Um, wow, look at the spiders chilling out on the top of that mushroom. Um, yeah, so Paul Simon was essentially a music artist, um, very, very good music artist. It was a song called Call Me Al, which is where the name Al came from. Just a little bit of a news thing for you there. Just call me Al. Yeah, it was a good song. Um, Paul Simon was very good in his day, but alas, he's aged a lot now. Uh, certainly not in his younger days anymore, Paul Simon. Um, but yeah, go check that out. Paul Simon, you can call me Al. It's, it's a good song. <laughs> um, anyway, back to uh, Minecraftia um, and Soaring No Longer's post-mortem analysis. Um, I went to here next, this dungeon. Um, this dungeon was very, very hard. Uh, I came here second after the Tower of Sour. Um, and what was hard about this area was the fact that down here, I had to tunnel down here because there was cave spider spawners. And cave spider spawners made it very, very difficult. Um, I wasn't really ready for down here, but if you did the dungeons in order, I think you would be ready for this area. But obviously, me being me, I didn't. And um, yeah, I went down here, and um, this area was reasonably okay. Um, it, that area was very difficult, but after that, it kind of got a little easier. It may not have seemed like it at the time, but this room was fairly difficult. I remember there being blaze spawners here, and all the rest of it. Wow, oh, cave spider spawner up here. Um, I remember there being blazers which could have took out these wooden bridges which made life difficult. Skeleton here. Silver fish in the floor which made things uh, very difficult. The terrain was quite difficult to navigate. But that's what you get in a mine I guess, so well done there. Um, Tale of Kingdoms dude. Two diamonds, I could have used that really. Um, yeah, so it made this area difficult. The blazers certainly made it harder. I didn't collect any of the gold. I just collected the diamonds here at the time. Um, but a lot of these blocks were silverfish. Um, because of the spawners. Obviously, they kept running out and into stuff. Um, so, yeah, then we came down here. And, yes, um, wow, I did not see this. Um, I didn't touch anything while I was down here. Another spawner. What was that? Cave spider. I'm glad I didn't. Sponge blocks. It's been a while since I've seen any sponge blocks. Hello, creeper. I know there was a trap down here. Somebody told me about that after I'd completed the dungeon itself, but I guess that's that. I remember going down here, and I broke the rules down here. Um, you were men across using the minecart. 
I guess well it doesn't really seem to be working right now but uh, you might have crossed using the minecart but uh, I didn't so I broke the rules there and uh, here there was the riddle um, and I, I like this idea because we don't usually get puzzles in CTM maps it made a change from fighting tons of spawners to actually get to a wool box and uh, you had to think about this riddle carefully but it wasn't too hard it says the correct button is not on either end one of us is not telling the truth that's a lie because that's what he said one of them is telling the truth so you're left with the other three buttons I am the correct button the last button is telling the truth and the correct button is next to me well we already know he's incorrect because he told us that so it means that it must be the other side so the last button is telling the truth it didn't mean this button it meant the button before that one the last button before that one which was the correct button and ironically enough it said it was the correct button which uh, was rather interesting at the, at the time um, wow I have blast protection 4 I could have used that but yeah generally I actually blocked the trap off here there was a um, well, a dispenser up here, what did that have in it? Blazers. You weren't meant to do that, but I got it right first time anyway, so I think I can be forgiven for that. And to get out, you were actually meant to use this and then just climb through. I didn't. <laughs> I used the minecart and went back round again, so... That was not really what I intended to do, really. Um, but yeah, that was this area. This area was... What I liked about it was the fact that it utilised a different style of mine and it utilised a puzzle which is something we don't normally get in a CTM map. Um, so well done on that one Cold Fusion, you did well with the puzzle and the redstone type stuff. Um, if I go up here I'm guessing... Where's the way out? Well, there's the moose room, you had infinite food, I never used the moose room but you can use it for infinite mushroom stew. Um, so yeah, I finished up here, then I went over to the dark farm and the dark farm was a very very tough area um, there was cave spiders in here I blocked that off to make life a little easier for myself um, I'm just gonna break these there's a couple of spawners over here but generally I I found this area to be fairly difficult but it wasn't incredibly difficult it wasn't impossible all I had to do really was block the cave spiders in, then you had to run through some vines left in there, there must have been some other stuff um, there's a couple of other things in here but um, I just ran through with the knockbacks cleared the dirt out and I pulled the spawners out fairly quickly and easily and it kinda went without a hitch I didn't have too much trouble in trying to pick that out and trying to uh, get those out. It may have seemed a bit different at the time but it wasn't too bad. In this area though, the actual dark farm, I was the subject of my own downfall because quite literally I had a downfall. I fell off and I ended up falling into the farm. So I kind of, um, and I was poisoned as well, I remember that I got poisoned quite a few times down here which meant I, was, I came close to death on several occasions down here but um, Generally, this area was not too bad. I'm not letting that owl out because he's gonna, just going to get mauled. Uh, zombie spawner there. Um, this area was not too bad. I, I ended up messing up quite a bit myself here, which resulted in that. And I knew I had to heal some hearts. I think I was down to half a heart of health. And I may, may have even made a, an episode out of that and stopped at that point. But Flint Steel with Fire Aspect 2. Oh. Um... I ended up stopping and I knew I had to get in somewhere and I thought well most of these areas are probably going to be silverfish blocks so I ended up breaking in here and I found the wall purely by accident but the problem in here was I could have bridged myself a tunnel across but I didn't I ran straight for it so I came close to death here as well there was a, a better technique I could have used here but generally this area what I liked about it was the fact that it, it was very well hidden and the wall took some searching but it didn't take any digging uh, there were a lot of cave spiders there and I struggled with that and I came close to death on several occasions which made this area perhaps the hardest dungeon I'd faced so far at the time I then went to the lost library from here and from there and the library was can't really comment on the library because I did not explore it I, I didn't explore it I ran through and got to the puzzle out you come Al 
Um, I just went and there was a puzzle at the end of this area. And I remember the uh, oh, there's cave spider spawner there. Um, I remember there being a puzzle at the end of it. Um, it was like a we had to turn all the redstone torches on, and that took forever. But as I say, I like the idea of using puzzles in the map. Um, something different, which I've I've not done before. Um, and it took it took a while to figure this one out. Come on out, Al. It, it took it took a while to figure this one out, but it we were something different, and it was something quite interesting. So I have to give credit to Cold Fusion for mixing it up a bit and not making it all just spawner related and actually using a few nice little touches like these puzzles. So that's what I liked about this area. I can't really comment on the rest of it because I didn't explore it. I just ran straight through. I'm guessing there's probably going to be a lot of loot hidden around behind these bookshelves and the rest of it uh, because uh, I didn't explore it. I won't spoil it for other people because if I don't know it's unfair to spoil it on others. Um, so yeah, that was this area. And the last area I went to was the Black Claw Spire. Um, that area was an interesting area because it started out difficult, then it got easy uh, towards the end. Well, it certainly got easier. I don't think any part of this map was actually easy. I think areas got easier but as you went through the map, but nowhere was ridiculously easy. And I know I didn't even go through this area. There was a bunch of spawners down here that I did not even venture to. I bridged across from the uh, Tower of Power. And uh, this area was interesting because there was a blaze spawners down here. And you were okay when you got the magma cream out of this chest. And then you could just kind of run up the rest of it without too much of a hitch. This area wasn't too bad. There's a couple of blazes. I think there were some skeletons that were here, but none of it was really difficult. Gas spawners in bedrock, but you didn't really need to spend time hanging around near the gas spawners. You just needed to keep... I think the objective of this area was just to get straight to the wool. You, I think that's what Cold Fusion intended. I don't think he intended for you to hang around on this area. Maybe wrong, but for me, I personally thought that you, the idea was just to go straight to the wall and then get out of here. So that's what I did. I can't really comment a whole lot on it because I didn't explore it a lot. I know Joe Hills uh, didn't do too well on this area, um, so I'll have to message him about that at some point and ask what on earth went wrong. Um, see what... Uh, happened with that and I remember I had to just jump up this area and there were a couple of blazes up here but they didn't affect me a great deal because I had the uh, fire resistance potions up here and I like this area, nice way to round it off the spy chickens eggs get out of here spy <laughs> and uh, you obviously went in here and there was a wool box and there was yellow wool and that, that actually does work, I did some tests on that off camera, that actually does work and we, and we left here, and I can't really comment a whole lot on it, but I like the idea how it was built out of obsidian. Um, something which makes it very hard to dig through, so you can't really take out the spawner. So the idea is not to hang around, the idea is to keep going, which is what I did. I figured that out, and I thought, well, it's a good idea. Um, so that's what I liked about that area, and that is really it for the whole map. There's not a whole lot more I can say. I know that this area, somebody told me that this area was trapped. Um, that, and I thought from the moment I start the map, rail lines are always rigged. I can see some gravel there. Straight into the lava. I would have been a goner. So, yeah, that is kind of everything on this map. Uh, what I liked about it was it utilised puzzle aspects and a few other things, as I mentioned throughout the video. Um, yeah, there was a, a nice range of different monster spawners rather than just the same ones all the time, which kind of made it interesting. And I must give credit to Cold Fusion for the fact that he actually built this on a world that was already generated. And I've done that once before with Castaway Escape. I built a world, well, I built a map on a world that was already sort of generated. It was uh, built on an island. But it's even harder for Cold Fusion because he has buildings that he's limited to, like the Tower of Power. He's going after my my Al, isn't he? I don't want him hurting my Al. Where is Al? Has he gone inside? Al? Al, are you there? It's 
probably gone down and chilling in the nether. Oh, here's Al. He's gone inside. <laughs> uh, essentially, uh, this area was, uh, well, this whole map, it utilised something quite a bit different, which you have to give Cold Fusion credit for, and that was the fact that it utilised, obviously, areas that were already built, like the Tower of Power and Cozy Cottage, and added to it, which was a very, very good idea. And I really like the idea, so well done Cold Fusion, uh, credit to you, this was a very, very good map. And you've also got to remember that Cold Fusion is not normally a CTM map builder. It normally builds adventure maps, which are more like Gloria. I've heard a lot about Gloria, and that's what Cold Fusion is known for. As far as I'm aware, I may be wrong, but that's what I remember him as, the creator of Gloria. And Gloria is an adventure map that's a lot easier. I've never played it, but I've seen it a few times. Um, and a couple of people who are, I've watched have played that map, and it, it looks really good. So it's something new for Cold Fusion, and he's done really well in a, in, a, in a go at it. So I give him credit for that. So you've got to remember that. So actually, Gloria 2 just released a few days ago. So I'll link um, a link to that in the description. And who knows? Maybe one day I may do a let's play on it. Um, I have to play Gloria 1 though first to understand it. And I've got quite a few things on at the moment with different series and bits coming up. But maybe in the future, uh, I really hope so. So thank you to Cold Fusion for making this map and making the series work. And thank you for Paul for uploading the tutorial world, as I've said. And I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys, and indeed this series. If you have, a like or a subscribe is always appreciated, as you know. And I hope to see you in another series very, very soon. And until then, see you later and have a good day.